there it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today I have a beautiful Christmas card for you made using this gorgeous stamp set called Snowfront from Stamping Up. So for this card I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz stamp platform I just think this is going to be a lot easier you can of course do it without but for some of the bits that I want to do some stamping off and some probably some repeat stamping over the same area I think it's going to work a lot better. So what I've got is a piece of whisper white cardstock I have cut it to four and three quarters by six and three quarters so that it will fit on a five by seven card and what I will do is I will put all the colors I've used etc on the actual blog post so that you'll know from there rather than me telling you each one so I started off with this kind of squiggly bit that's probably meant to be used as a path but I think it worked really well as like a path in the snow so I used that as my first sort of guide then I took the little cottage and I stamped first just the bottom part of the cottage in the same blue I think it was soft sky I think that's what it's called um, and then I took the top half and did that in the grey and I just felt that that the bottom half didn't really want to be in the grey because that's kind of the snowy part of it so then there was another bit that's kind of like a little bumpy arch bit again which is clearly just like little hills or whatever you want to be I wanted it to be like little bumps in the snow just to give kind of that white part at the front some dimension and some character and showing that it is snow by adding a very delicate blue just to add that kind of iciness now this one that I've put at the bottom I think could be used as a pool or as I've done it, it's just like a, a flatter area in the snow, at least that was my plan. Then I've taken the gorgeous little snowman again, just stamping him in the same blue. And what I did for that is I re-stamped it. This is one of the reasons I wanted to use my stamp platform so that for things like this where I wanted to double stamp it, it just made it easier. And also, as you can see, I then took the darker colour, um, the grey, to do his little hat and also his little arms. I'm then just taking my stamping right markers and I'm using this orange here just to add a little nose, a carrot nose, and then a darker grey-black. I'm not sure whether it was a black or a grey um to do the little coal eyes and then just add a little bit of dimension to the side of the little top hat you could easily um add some little uh coal buttons down the front of him if you want then I took um, a lovely dark brown and I just did his little arms I just felt that I just added some character some lovely little detail to that little snowman so the next thing I'm doing is I'm taking some of the bare branch trees and I'm just stamping them again in a very dark light color just on the bottom there um, again really to show that that wasn't a pool as well I wanted it to be clear that it was actually like the snow so for this part I'm doing my little mountains and for this I'm going to be using the gray and this new uh, lovely new uh, purple posy and so what I did was I did the bottom half in the purple and then the top half in sorry the top half in the purple and the bottom half in the grey however the second time I did it what I did was I stamped down the purple uh, sorry the grey first I'm getting myself all back to front here I stamped down the grey first I did it very lightly I'd stamped it off first well and then this time I just put the little piece of paper over the top and then I just put the purple ink nearer the top and then I stamped that down so that just added it more kind of watercolory because obviously the further back in the distance the more the color is washed out and more lighter it is because your eye obviously can't see those colors so far away so I was trying to get that dimension by adding it in that way and that's the same with these trees that's why I stamped off the trees first so that you would get that very pale delicate kind of look to them and as I was going along I like here I felt because I wanted to add a tree next to my cottage it needed something to have a foundation to because these were just trees the ones at the side there that were on the hill actually had their own kind of foundation I mean I suppose with those I probably could have done the bottom part of the trees on that hill 
in the snowy color but i sort of in my mind was thinking well they're further back they're higher you know they maybe they're not got so much snow on them back there i don't know i may i don't not sure i was really thinking about it particularly i don't think it looked wrong and you'll see here on the first little tree next to my cottage i stamped off and then on the second one i didn't then down the bottom i added some more uh, bare branch trees you couldn't really see me do those so well but you'll see at the end that uh, you can see those then i'm adding a big fir tree in the middle now i'm doing this in a really dark color because again this is in the foreground so you want that much stronger what i did do is wipe the or pat the edges with a little cloth just to take some of the color off the sides of the um fir tree there just to add a little bit of a dimension to it however when I set it down I realized that I was slightly out with um sitting it on my little hill of snow there so I just took a marker and added a little bit more to its trunk just to give it some dimension I then wanted to add some more trees in the back here but it meant it would have gone over my cottage so I actually stamped and then hand cut the little cottage in some masking and just pop that over and then I was able to um, stamp my trees now you'll see for these ones I didn't stamp off because these are obviously much further forward they're coming towards the dimension where the cottage is laying so I felt that was better however what then happened was the the foreground tree this big fir tree looked wrong because it was the same color as the trees behind so I decided to re-stamp that fir tree to give it some more depth and dimension so then I added some little um deer in that gap there I just thought that worked really well and then I was looking at my snowman I felt he needed still just a little something more so I added a little bit of dimension by just using a marker and just adding some little sh bit of shading down the side where that was already there so it's not difficult you're literally just coloring in what was already there um, initially I went just on the edge of it but actually afterwards I filled that in a little bit more because it, it looked wrong with like a line and then another line in two different shades so then i added the two little birds i think they're meant to be cardinals but i decided to just do them as birds plain birds as it were and then i still decided that it was just still gappy at the top there it needed a little bit more so i added some more trees but what you'll see i was doing was i was using a little cloth and i'm wiping off the parts that i don't actually want the ink to stamp I don't want those two edges so what I'm doing is I'm putting the lid down having a look then taking it back up wiping off where I need it to be wiped off and just really sort of using that because as you put the lid down you can see it a little bit better however you'll notice when I stamped it here there was like a gap around the cottage so I just had to give it a bit more of a press to get that to look a bit better so again I wanted to add a few more trees in the background here now ideally you would have done this the other way around you would have done these ones before you did the ones at the front because what you'll see is that I'm not sure if you can but you might just be able to see that the the color was kind of going you could see it over the top of the trees in the front but also I felt that again the dimension wasn't quite right it felt like the ones that were behind the cottage should be still slightly paler than the ones that were coming up towards the side of the cottage then of course I so I darkened that and then that meant my front fir tree needed darkening as well so it was just a case of processing but if I'd have kind of planned it maybe a little better I would have not had to keep sort of lining up the same trees that said it wasn't difficult because once you sort of put them on top it was really easy to see and to be honest if you didn't get it perfect it didn't matter because they're sort of all fuzzy anyway but then I still felt there was a bit of a gap but on this occasion I didn't want to add more trees so I wanted to add a little bit more of mountain so I used that sort of mound that I used for the snow earlier but this time I used the grey to sort of just add as this sort of said just like a bit more to the mountain like the base of the mountain now you'll see there I just took a little bit too much off of the gray so it had a gap between the trees 
and the gray so I just went back in and what actually happened was of course was the edge part got re-stamped in the ink so it kind of shaded and I quite liked that so um I thought that worked really really well just doing that kind of edge like that I then felt it needed something still more on the other side it felt a bit gappy so I just did a bit more mountain so I added my purple first which I again I didn't stamp very well I was trying to get it light so the first time I sort of didn't press too much but I, I clearly didn't press enough so then I just went back down with the same ink I didn't re-ink and pressed again then I took it and just added the grey just kind of more on the bottom a bit so that would just give that nice purple sort of topped mountain effect but again the same thing as with the trees I felt then that the mountain there just needed a little bit more something so I relined it up in the middle and just stamped a bit more onto it and I felt that just added that dimension again and just added that <sighs> yeah dimension and depth really um again you'll see there that one I didn't really line up that good but it I don't think it matters I think it works still fine and I don't think that that made any difference to how it looks at all I then felt that there was a lot of green in the middle but not any green at the bottom so I felt the balance was off a little so I added a couple of little trees this time I remember to get it the right way around in the stamping order um I mean I don't think I did it the wrong way around before it was more that as I was building it I was kind of thinking oh no now I need a bit here and a bit there so it didn't matter but this time I kind of had it in my head a little bit clearer so I managed to get it the right way round and so I put the three little ones first and then I added the bigger one um, and again I did that one in the slightly darker green as well and I felt that that just added that dimension and we didn't have to re-stamp any so that was all good so then I added another bear tree in the bottom corner there again just because I felt it needed a little bit something extra down there and then the best bit I always think is removing the mask because you kind of see how it all worked and it, I felt it came together really really well that cottage looked so nestled into the actual sort of trees and things next I took another stamp set from stamping up and just used the sentiment in seasons greetings and I used the green I didn't want to use black I always think it can look a bit like not in keeping if you can get away with doing it in the one of the colors I always think it looks a lot nicer so then I made a card base that was five by seven but I did it using my easy peasy card method again I'll link that in the blog post so that if you don't know how I do that because I made the five by seven card so it was top folding which obviously you can't just unless you've got an A3 piece of card or a really big piece of card that you can cut it 14 inches by five and then score at seven you really need to do it in my easy peasy card method way and then I just added some of the lovely blue card to the inside and matte and lead also on the front with the uh, stamped piece I then decided that I really wanted my sentiment on the front so as you saw me stamp it but I wanted it as a lovely little flag so this is the Sue Wilson uh, flag dies and I die cut two of them obviously matting and layering them I haven't I don't think I've done this before where I've matted and layered them before but I may have done but I decided to use the blue um just to bring that a bit of color and help it pop off the background but not so strong like the green would have been a bit strong and I felt also the blue was just keeping that icy snowy feel and then the only bit of dimension on this card really from the point of view of actual height was this flag and I just added some foam one layer of foam on the back and then just stuck it up the top there at the just above the mountains and um, I just think that looks finished that off really nicely there and then the final touch was using my zig two-way glue pen and just basically drawing in where I wanted to add some crystalline sparkle glitter just so that it would add that shimmery gorgeousness that you get with snow and then as you saw I just sprinkled the glitter over the top you can see that some of it went where I didn't put the glue and I guess that will probably come off eventually but I kind of liked it like some of it like over all of that tree I didn't actually put it on the whole of the tree I just put it on the edges but I kind of liked it so I didn't think it mattered and there it is done uh, I just thought that I just love this stamp set and I think it looks so gorgeous but what I love about it is that you definitely could use this 
at, for other times of the year because you could definitely instead of using it as icy blue for snow and obviously miss out the snowman you can make that as greens and stuff and obviously miss out the bare branch trees and add more trees so I definitely think it's a really versatile stamp set so although it's called snow front I'm sure you could make a lot of different cards with this and I just love the fact that you know you've done all this different stamping and actually there was only one part we needed to mask off and it just looks so effective so I hope that you like it as well as I do and I would as always love to hear your comments do go on across to the blog post so that you can see all the photos of the finished card because I think you get a better view of it in the photos and I do take a ton so you'll see a load and also of course all the links to the products that I used as well okay thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed oh and by the way when you go over to the blog post you will see my newly christmified christmasified uh website because i've done it again this year i hadn't done it for the cup uh last year because i was sort of in the process of redoing my whole website so this year we've got the christmas decorations back on the website so i hope you like those as well so thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon bye for now bye